Hey Matt reporters, in this video I wanted to compare between the different iPhone models. We're going to look at the iPhone 11 which has an extra wide angle lens which as I've mentioned before can be advantageous when capturing using your iPhone and we'll compare that to an iPhone 7 which just has a standard camera lens. I'll go ahead and start with the iPhone 11 and use the simple scan mode. I'll show some examples at the end what the difference is between the complete versus the simple scan options that I'll be doing using the iPhone 7. But to know a little bit more about that, I went ahead and linked to three getting started videos in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so before I get started, I just want to go into my options button over here and confirm that I'm using the simple scan option. And then I'll go ahead and come down with that. And let me just back up a little bit so you can see what I'm going to do here with the simple scan. I'll go ahead and start my scan. All right, so that was one simple scan. Now what I'd like to do is go ahead and mark this window behind me, as well as the window that's uh, right over here, so I don't get any kind of spray outside of this one model. So I'll zoom in here a little bit and hit the markings button here. And you can see what I have here is a mirror marking at the top, window is below that, and then the trim marking. In this case, I'll use the window marking because I want to actually create a wall of mesh in my 3D model. So I'll tap that and then just move across this way. You want that marking to go just a little bit beyond the window. So this should be just fine. And once I've done that, I'll just tap the X and go ahead and hit upload. Now let's go ahead and give the iPhone 7 a try. With the iPhone 7, I'm going to go ahead and do the complete scan so you can see the difference between doing a simple scan with something like the iPhone 11 that again has that extra wide angle lens to the iPhone 7, which does not have that extra wide angle lens. Let me just back up again. So just as before, I want to hit the options button, make sure that I'm scanning uh, correctly. So I'll choose the complete scan in this case, and I'll get rid of that options panel and uh, go ahead and get started. All right, so now I've completed a complete scan. You could see as I was turning around, I had to stop so many more times. A, because I was using the complete scan, so I had three rings, not only the center ring, but also I did the bottom and then I went and did the top, but also because the field of view in this camera is not nearly as wide as it is with the iPhone 11 using that extra wide angle lens. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my markings just as I did before, and I'll go ahead and upload. Now these are just single scan models, so they really shouldn't take very long to process. Let's go check out what it looks like on the computer. Let's start by looking at the complete scan that I captured with the iPhone 7. Now as you can see, when I move around this model or rotate around this uh, single scan position that I had captured, you can see everything from the very top. There's just a little bit of blurriness up here at the top that wasn't captured. And same thing at the bottom. It's just a little tiny bit, but most of it is captured and this is exactly why it's called a complete scan. As you saw, the complete scan obligated me to capture the center ring as well as the pictures from the very top and the very bottom. And that's what was able to complete that sphere and get me what you see here. So what you end up with is really a debate whether you want to take a little bit more time and capture all the necessary images that are required to complete the entire sphere, or if you want to just do the simple scan and just get a center ring right around the middle. Now, I will say that with a complete scan, because you have many more images, you also introduce a little bit more stitching artifacts. So keep that in mind. It is a lot more obvious with a ceiling such as this, where I have these hard, hard lines. And you will notice that uh, some edges like this window here didn't come out very good. I probably could have done a better job as I was rotating, uh, turning around the camera and not myself. So uh, this could have been improved 
but uh, this certainly is something to take into consideration when choosing between the simple and complete scan. Now let's go ahead and check out what the simple scan that I captured using the iPhone 11 looks like. If I move around here, you get pretty much the same effect, but you'll notice that I do have a lot less stitching. So the model will have a much, much larger blurry area at the top and at the bottom, because again, this is a simple scan, but uh, again, this was done much, much faster. I didn't have to take nearly as many images and I still have a really good sense of what this room looks like. Now, just for fun, if you don't have the newer iPhones or iPad with the extra wide angle lens, I did go ahead and process a simple scan using my iPhone 7 just to see what that looks like. So here you can see I'm turning around the room, but you can see that the top is completely blurred out and uh, you can't see the ceiling at all. It's not, it's not in there. So um, you still have a little bit of a bottom, but here too, very, very blurred out because this lens doesn't have that extra wide field of view. It's not going to be able to capture nearly as much of the scene. So here's just a uh, look at what this uh, looks like if you do capture using a simple scan with an older iPhone that does not have that extra wide angle lens. Now I'll go back into my model that I captured with the iPhone 11. This is the simple scan. And I want to show you a little bit about the things that you can do with your model. So let's go ahead and add matter tags and label your model. So the first thing that we need to do is hit the edit button right here. And now what I can do is go into the matter tags uh, icon right here. You'll notice that all along this side, I have all my tools. I can capture images. Uh, photos and download them to use in my marketing material or any way I want and uh, labels right here. We'll get to that in a second and the measurements will also get to this. But for now, I want to touch on matter tags. So I'll just click this. And what I need to do here is press the plus button down here. The same holds true for mobile. So now you can do all your editing on your mobile device as well. And so I'll hit the plus and now you'll see wherever my cursor goes or if you were on mobile, then you would just tap where you want to position your matter tag. You can see that the cursor uh, is followed by the matter tag. And no matter what I do, I'll go over here, let's say, and just go ahead and click there. That'll fix the matter tag to that position. I can always move it later on. So it's not a problem if you don't get it uh, right on where you want it to be. But now I'll just go ahead and give it a title and a description. And another thing that I can do here is change the color of my matter tag, as well as add a link to anything in the description. And I can actually embed content such as videos, images, PDF documents, things like that. So I'm not going to do that in this case, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was to add a matter tag, thereby adding so much more information to your model and it's just that much more beneficial to any of your visitors. So we did the matter tag. Now I want to go ahead and label and label is something that you only see from the floor plan view. It's going to automatically, as soon as I hit that plus button right here, it automatically zoomed out to the floor plan view and I can just tap anywhere in the room that I want to include the label. Now this label will only appear when the visitor chooses to see the model in the floor plan view. It's also important to note that in order to have your visitors be able to see your labels, you need to enable them. So go into the settings button down here. And if we go into advanced labels is right here and currently it is turned on. But if in your case it's turned off and you're not sure why your labels are not appearing, this might be the reason. So go ahead and make sure that this switch is activated and then you can exit the uh, settings window there. Finally, I wanted to touch on the measurements mode. So as I said previously, the measurements mode icon is right over here. And even if I'm in the floor plan view, what I can do is turn this and click on the measurements mode uh, icon right there. And then as with all the other tools, I just go ahead and hit the plus button here. And I can tap here once and just drag across and tap here to get a measurement of the width of this room. Now, as you can see, I can either hit the escape button on my keyboard or just come down here and hit the green check mark. 
So again, the same holds true. If you're on mobile, you can do this and um, you won't have the escape button, but you just hit the green check mark and that'll do it. So the other way that I can measure is not only in the floor plan view, which by the way, I can make these measurements available also to my visitors, just like with labels. Measurements captured in the floor plan view are only visible in the floor plan view. So keep that in mind. If you wanna go into the dollhouse view, just click on this icon down here. And from the dollhouse view, the measurements are visible either uh, from the dollhouse view for my visitors or from within the model itself. So for now, let's go ahead and keep this on the dollhouse view and I'll go ahead and hit the plus button here. Now, this is something that is unique to the desktop editing experience. You won't have this on mobile. Whether I'm in the dollhouse view or in the inside view, I can just double click my mouse to draw a line all the way across uh, perpendicular to the surface on which I clicked. So as you can see, after double clicking, I still can continue my measurement, but in this case, I just want to come down here again and hit the green check because that's all I was looking for. And now I can go inside and you can see I can still see that measurement line there. So that's just a really quick look at some of the tools that we have available for you in the editing mode when you're editing your Matterport model. You can find out a lot more information about these tools and the other tools that we have available in the support documentation at support.matterport.com.